uh, President Biden and the Democrats uh, say they want a clean bill and they're trying to turn their intransigence, intransigence into some kind of, uh, to, their, to their credit. They're saying what we want is clean and what the Republicans want is dirty. The truth is that it's just, a, it's just a triumph of messaging and that it really is the responsibility of the president and the Democrats to respond to the fact that the half, you know, the half of Congress is controlled by the Republicans. They have a role in government and they've proposed something. Well, they should negotiate on that. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gurdon. Hugo, the Democrats and the White House, President Biden, say what they want in this whole debt ceiling standoff is a clean debt ceiling increase. You know, mm -hmm. it sounds like a ad for soap or something like that. Exactly. You've pointed out that this is sort of a misleading term, or at the very least, a sort of biased, a slanted term. Yeah, Jim, the thing, the Democrats are just better than Republicans at framing and uh, uh, debates and using words which people can easily adopt, which favor one side. Who doesn't like something that is clean? The implication mm -hmm. is that if you don't do it the Democrats way, you're asking for something dirty. Mm -hmm. The Republicans are trying to, and I think perfectly reasonably say, look, excessive spending, uh, debt finance spending increases the debt. Therefore, these two things are inextricably connected. Let's talk about them at the same time. We know that we shouldn't let the, the, the United States default. We are, and and the, the House Republicans have increased the debt ceiling by uh, $1.5 trillion. And what they're saying is, let's talk about $4.8 trillion worth of cuts over the course of the next 10 years. Seems logical. It's the only legislation around at the moment which is actually there to stop a default and to, to raise the debt ceiling. But the uh, President Biden and the Democrats uh, say they want a clean bill and they're trying to turn their intransigence, intransigence into some kind of um, to their to their credit. They're saying what we want is clean and what the Republicans want is dirty. The truth is that it's just a, it's just a triumph of messaging, and that it really is the responsibility of the president and the Democrats to respond to the fact that the half, you know the half of Congress is controlled by the Republicans. They have a role in government and they've proposed something. Well, they should negotiate on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of it too is they're trying to frame the Republicans as the party of default. Yet. Right. The only debt ceiling increase that has passed a chamber of Congress, right. that has received majority support in a chamber of Congress, is, is the House plan, and they oppose it. It, it, it. Exactly so. The reason that the country is bumping its head up against the debt ceiling is because President Biden and the Democrats on entirely partisan bills have increased spending by $5 trillion. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways of not coming to this kind of impasse. One of them is to reduce spending so that the, uh, the, the, the government, the, the federal government doesn't bump its head up against the ceiling. But that, of course, would mean that the Democrats had to undo a certain degree of, or, or quite a lot of their, their agenda. Uh, they wouldn't be able to spend all of these trillions of dollars buying voters votes with voters' money. Mm -hmm. You could do it by saying, uh, you know, that you're going to negotiate every time over spending and debt ceiling at the same time. And there's a third way, and this is the way that the Democrats have, the one that the Democrats have decided on. You're going to just demagogue the issue and say that anybody who doesn't disagree with you is asking for a dirty and, and dangerous uh, default, uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, way of going about it. it it's, it's just messaging. And, uh, and uh, as you say, the Republicans, the only ones who's actually voted to raise the ceiling and prevent default, the onus is really on, the, on, on President Biden and the, and the Democrats to, uh, to talk to them about that. So they are finally going to talk. The President has invited right. both the Democratic congressional leaders, right. also House Speaker McCarthy, Senate Minority Leader McConnell right. of the White House. But in the run-up to all of this, it hasn't really sounded like let's make a deal. It's, it's still a lot of the same attacks. It, it, it exactly is. Uh, it's, 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 yes, yes, we're willing to talk, but we're not willing to change our position. I mean, in other words, we are already foreclosing on the idea of 
us compromising. It is all for you, the other side, to compromise. It's not, it's not uh, a discussion in good faith yet. Um, there are still, uh, obviously, you know, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, warned that we might reach uh, the default date on uh, June the 1st. That was probably, um, it, was, it was not so much alarmist as, as being, uh, you know, cautious. Mm -hmm. The date is probably someday, uh, sometime after that. So there is a little bit of time to get this done. But at the moment, the President and the Democrats are not discussing this in good faith. Finally, there is the tragic situation unfolding in Sudan. Mm. Uh, there are Americans there. The United States has tried to have some role in terms of evacuating people. Right. Talk a little bit about you know how our role over there has contributed to this situation. Yeah, you know, I've written about this. Uh, it, I, it, Sudan is a country I used to visit a lot. Indeed, um, you know, I, there was, was a period, uh, you know, a long time ago when my uh, you know, when I could have called it home, frankly, I was, you know, been there a lot. I know the country really pretty well. Um, it was never a candidate, really, for serious. It was never, there was never a chance that this was going to be um, the transition to some kind of modern liberal democracy. It's been ruled by the military for decades, and now the two competing powers are the traditional military and a sort of uh, a. a, 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 a informal military group that grew up out of the Janjaweed, which was so murderously uh, uh, um, involved in the, the last civil war. So the idea that this was a country that was going to transition to some kind of democracy was fanciful. It's not the kind of, I mean, there are 16,000 Americans there, mm -hmm. and there is some, there's been some um, evacuation and people who want to leave. But it's not the kind of place where American effort is usefully expended trying to create democracy. The point that I wanted to make is, you know, American efforts uh, can be dissipated, and they are dissipated if you try and do something everywhere. And, you know, my goodness, Sudan should not even be on the list. Right. What America really needs to be doing is focusing on protecting democracy where it already exists, which is to say in Taiwan, and that democracy is increasingly threatened by China. Don't waste and dissipate efforts focusing on a country like Sudan. Focus on the places where you can really make a difference, and, uh, and Taiwan was the, the example that I, that I gave. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hugo. Thanks very much, Jim. You can read Hugo and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.